Welcome home to Eden. This is Love Life with Heve, and I'm here to celebrate with you the fact that we get to even be in a body at all, that, that we have each other to learn and grow from. This is Thanksgiving Day, so I'm giving thanks for all of you there to to share these videos with and these thoughts with and and um, serve serve you. <laughs> so here we go. This question is really, really so important. It's crazy how important this is. This question came in. How do I date many women without hurting anybody? You know, and it seems like it's a player's question. But really, it's not. It's not a player's question. Everybody needs, really needs, a time of exploration to know themselves, to know what their, their, um, their preferences are, their needs are, what's possible, how different different people are from each other. So let's look at how though this can happen in a healthy, happy way, healing way, instead of everybody just getting hurt and it turn, turning into a disaster and that feeling of like using people while, when you know already it's probably not gonna work or whatever. So the problem is not that you want to see a number of people and you want to explore. There's no problem with that. That That's valid and that's sacred, okay? The problem is capitalism. <laughs> the problem is the fact that we have this society that thinks that it can get away with taking more than we give. So whether you're the man or the woman, if your idea is, ah, I'm just going to take as much as I can of their sexy, hot nature, or, or their good cooking, or whatever it is you're enjoying, their money, <laughs> um, it's okay to want what they have to offer and learn from that. That's why you're there, right? It's, the issue is not even being that it's bad to be greedy. <laughs> the issue is not giving back right, is whether or not you're exchanging energy. Because as soon as you're exchanging energy, you're in the flow of all of nature. All of nature is constantly exchanging light and replenishment and water and soil and bugs and everybody's helping each other, you know. So all you need to do when you go into um, these numerous relationships is follow the, this protocol, okay? <laughs> Number one, honesty. You let people know that you're in a time of exploration. You don't know where it's going to lead. You don't know who is going to really be the right one for you. Um, you're opening your heart, your mind, your body to learn and grow. And um, maybe you even know that you need a couple years of this time period and so that you really let them know if they're in a hurry, you're not the one, you know? <laughs> okay, so uh, this that's good. Okay, now the other things are keep in mind how you're going to nourish them back, all right? So... What are you going to give to their mind, okay? So say they're in a new career path or something. How are you going to be an inspiration and a help to their mind in whatever way their mind is working? If, it's an, if they're really negative, lifting them up. What are you going to give to their body? In, in your encounters, what do you, how do you nourish their body? Do you bring food over? Do you offer massage? Do you hold and cuddle? Do you really pleasure them? Okay, good. <laughs> now, and what do you offer their emotions, okay? So do you say wonderful compliments? Do you lift them up? Do you, um, do, do you, yes, like when, when you're in the throes of, of, of an intimate encounter, do you say sacred mantras to them, sacred words, like you're amazing, you're special, you're whole, I love you, you know, you're so um, sexy, you, you're so uh, inspiring, you know. All right, so now if you are lifting them up emotionally, physically, <laughs> uh, practically, practically, oh, this is another one, uh, do you, helping them with things that are difficult, like the trash, or um, loading up the, the wood, you know, or um, uh, fixing that gadget, or, or helping with their car. Now, you're a help, right, on all these levels, and you've been honest. So you're giving to their life, right, or you help, help pick their kids up at school or something, you know. 
you are a benefit. You are a friend. You're truly a friend. You're honest about what you can and can't do in terms of promising forever or commitment. So that's all good. Now there's a little bit more to this though. So the issue now is if you're doing that for this person and you're dating somebody else and you're trying to do all that for them too, <laughs> and then another person and trying to do all that for them too, the issue is not whether it's bad to date a lot of people. The issue is how many people can you actually handle being intimate with and giving to on all this, the sacred levels and of exchange. <laughs> now, if you're independently wealthy or you're retired, you're in good shape, right? You can do a lot of this. <laughs> and you probably the women are really busy or the guys are really busy and so... You know, they won't notice when you're gone with somebody else because you didn't promise them the moon anyway. You didn't enter a commitment. <laughs> you didn't break your word. Now, I am somebody who really believes in keeping your word, okay? I really do. So don't squander your word. Don't don't uh, uh, say a lie. Be, be real, all right? Now, the thing about being real is it's really loving. It, it's really brave. It's really, um, instead of being afraid of saying no, um, be, be that courageous to say no, because it's the fear of no, that if you can't say no to a woman, she knows that any woman could walk up to you and say, I want to do you right now in the bathroom and you won't be able to say no. <laughs> and so you have, you're not a sacred container for her. When you say no to her, she respects you. She feels that, oh, this man, um, is somebody I can trust when he says yes because his, he does have a firm no, and that yes, when it comes, will be a real yes that I can count on. Does this help? <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, don't be a capitalist in love, all right? Do be a giver, an exchanger. Do be honest, and do uh, understand that it is absolutely your right, absolutely sacred and necessary to explore with numerous people and um, to find yourself. We get into these marriages. We get into these long-term commitments and, and it's a miserable experience. That's why they often say the first marriage is pretty bad and the second one is pretty good. It's because you don't know yourself in the first one and you get into this situation without having explored enough and, and then it's like uh, all these things you're putting up with because you think ah, that's what love is, I guess, and I'm the bad one and I shouldn't want that. And then if you explore enough with other people, you find, oh, wait a second, those things I want are, are really easy with other people. They're natural. They're, uh, they're, they're not even um, an issue. <laughs> it's, it flows, you know, with another kind of person. And then maybe you come back to the original person, though. You go, ah, but I like how, how difficult that challenge was. It was making me grow. You know, you find, you find where you're really called, where, where life, your destiny has magic and healing. So the, the growth, the growth is full of pleasure. And this is what people don't really get is because we go to school and we're taught in a way that is so unpleasant and so denying of our bodies and so full of bullshit <laughs> and false information and missing information. Uh, we think learning has to be hard. That's what learning is, <laughs> you know, but I know as being dyslexic my whole life, I could not handle any of that in terms of learning, but anytime the learning became experiential and connected to friendship and connected to nature and the heart and um, uh, fantasy and art, I could learn so easily and quickly. So it's a false concept to think you learn more quickly through difficulty. No, you learn more quickly through pleasure and love and grace. That's how you fully embrace information and learning. And this is true in love too. The journey of kind, loving, joyous connectedness will take you very, very far, very fast. So go ahead and explore what kind of energy, what kind of people you have um, instant connected flow with, okay? And it may surprise you what kind of people they are. Don't judge it, okay? Don't judge them. Only say yes to what 
feels good. And, you know, if you have a whole lot of lovers and you're having a whole lot of fun, <laughs> think of me. <laughs> Send me some good love. <laughs> no, no, don't think of anybody else. <laughs> some lover said to me one time, he said, uh, I knew he, it was a long distance relationship and he was going to be gone a lot. And so he was like, so are you going to be devoted to me when I'm, while I'm gone? And I was like, no, no, I'm not going <laughs> to, but I'm not going to see you for three months. No way. I'm not going to be that devoted. And he says to me, okay, okay, baby, take care of yourself. But think of me the whole time. <laughs> That's one way to deal with things. <laughs> so being, <laughs> being freely communicative about what your truth is, <laughs> do that. Okay. And, and give, give back, give back, be a friend. Okay. Much love. Happy Thanksgiving. I'm giving thanks for the many possibilities of life today. And when it narrows down, and you're tied down to this one experience with one person, that will be a very powerful, sacred journey. That's when the deepest love and the deepest learning begins. And, and so you want to be careful who you choose for that. You want to be really thinking of all the parts of yourself, okay? And make sure you're laughing a lot together, okay? Much love.